Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Michael Bartlett, and I'm a materials engineer. And it's a really, really cool job. So what I get to do, I'm a professor, and I get to study how things are put together, how we can make them better, and how we can take materials and use them in our everyday life. So my passion for this started when I was young. Now, does anyone out there like to race their friends on their bikes? Lots of hands, right? So when I was growing up, I loved to race my friends down the street. And I always wanted, of course, to be the one in front, right? So what I, what I would do is I would look at my bike and I would wonder, well, how do I make it go faster? You know, I want to go faster. And I started thinking, well, what is it made out of? It's made out of all these very cool materials. So as I started growing up, I, I had this kind of instilled in me that materials were really important and really cool. And I started to get really into science and math. And when I looked at uh, engineering for college, I saw that there was material science and engineering. And I thought, wow. Like, that's exactly what I need to do. So as I got into this, I started exploring mostly soft materials. So things that are kind of like rubbery, maybe how your skin feels soft, kind of like that. And one of the things that I did uh, through this was I started working on adhesives. So does anyone know what this is? Tape. That's tape, that's right. Now, tape is really great. You can, you can take it, you can stick things together. And in fact, if you take a piece of tape, we know that if you put it on a surface, it can, it can hold tightly. But then most tapes, when you try to peel them off, it can be really hard, OK? So what I wanted to understand was, well, you know, do adhesives have to be built this way? And in fact, they don't have to. If you look into nature, there's actually many beautiful examples of different kinds of adhesives. So why don't we bring out uh, Crystal and her gecko? Well, hello, Crystal. Thank you for coming up with the gecko. And, and what is the gecko's name? So his name is Baluku, um, and he is a lychee gecko. But the scientific name for this is uh, Rhagodactyls lychianus. And they're from New Caledonia. Um, and as you can see, they love to jump. But they also have really sticky toe pads. Oh, that's fascinating. Why don't we, why don't we put him in the aquarium and see if he can stick to the glass? or hang out on the branch, which is also good. <laughs> but as you can see, the gecko is hanging upside down on this piece of wood. And how does it do it? Does anyone know how the gecko does this? Adhesives, of course. It has, on its hands, it has actually millions of these tiny hair-like features called setae. And what those do, they actually touch the surface that they're trying to stick to, and it allows them to hold on very tight. But what's so great about the gecko, and what makes it so different <laughs> from other adhesives, is that the gecko doesn't just sit there or, or, or hang on there. It actually is able to use this adhesive to climb up the ceiling. It can climb across the wall, and it can really hang out all day without doing any work. So let's kind of think about that. It has a strong adhesive when it wants it, but it also a very easy adhesive to pull off when it needs to. And it can do this over and over and over again. Truly inspiring. So as a materials engineer, I'm thinking about this gecko, and I'm like, well, why don't we make adhesives that can do the same kind of things? So what we did is we actually had to go uh, to, the, to the chalkboard and write down some new equations to try to understand how we can create adhesive materials that are just like the gecko's toe. So what we did is we designed a bio-inspired adhesive. And I'd like to maybe have a few volunteers come up and, and look at this. So why don't we get a couple, maybe two volunteers to come up on the stage? All right, so what's your name? Arane. Arane? Yeah. Nice to meet you. And we have one more. Coming up, and what's your name? Ranav. Ranav? Nice to meet you. Well, thank you, you both, for coming up. Now, what I want to do is I want to take this gecko-inspired adhesive, and we're going to stick it on this uh, piece of plastic. And I want you to hang a couple everyday objects off of it, OK? So I'm going to need your help. So what we do is we take the adhesive, we just press it down onto this uh, plastic surface here. And as you can see, at the bottom of this, we have this hook. 
So why don't we grab maybe the bag of oranges? Who wants to grab that? All right. So take it, hold on to this piece, and let's just hang it right off that adhesive. And as we see, it holds it just fine. But this is, you know, just a bag of oranges. What about a big gallon of water? That's pretty heavy, right? Oh, heavy. Okay, it's doing just fine. But, you know, as a kid, you probably are used to carrying around a heavy backpack, right? Now, wouldn't it be great if something else could hold that backpack for you? Well, what about a gecko-inspired adhesive? So why don't we grab that backpack and see what we can do? So it's pretty heavy, careful. So we're going to attach it right on there. And you can see it holds just fine. But here's the trick. What we can do is we can pull this adhesive off very, very easily. Who wants to pull off the adhesive? Let's come on over. Why don't you grab the edge and just pull it towards me? It comes off very easily. And then, one last thing, why don't, you, why don't you touch it? Does it feel sticky? Not really. It doesn't feel sticky at all. And that's because we're using bio-inspired engineering to design new kinds of materials. All right, well, thank you so much for coming up. You can head back down. Actually, let's do, you know what, that's not enough. I think they can do one more thing with us. Why don't you come back up? I think the backpack was pretty cool, but, I mean, how strong is the adhesive? Do you think that... Maybe we could do a tug of war with the adhesive and see if you can pull it off. So what we have here is a tug of war system made out of the adhesive materials. So why don't you take this side, and you can take that side. And what we have here is just a piece of plastic and adhesive is actually attached to that plastic, and we have these two brackets on the, side, on the side of the plastic so that it doesn't get twisted. So why don't you kind of step back a little bit, and then on the count of three, I'll let go, and let's see who wins the tug of war, okay? <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> oh! All right, all right. Very, very good. You're both very strong, but uh, the adhesive actually is just a little bit stronger. So, okay, thank you so much. So, again, as a materials engineer, there, there's plenty of examples in nature that can really inspire us to design new kinds of materials. And another area I'm interested in is trying to make new types of robots and electronics that are made out of soft materials. And if you make things out of soft materials, you can do all sorts of new things. Let's check out what nature can do if it's made out of soft materials. All right, so that's a beautiful example of what's, what's possible in nature. And something that really catches my attention there is watching this octopus squeeze its entire body through this very tiny hole. And what's really amazing about that is that that octopus can move all of its arms, it can sense all of its environment. So what if we could make a robot or electronic that could do the same thing? So what we've been doing in my lab is we take actually a liquid metal, and I'll show you that in just a second, and with this liquid metal, what's so great about it is that it's very soft, very fluid-like, but it also can conduct electricity, and that allows us to make robots and electronics. So what I have here is a little bit of this liquid metal, and as you can see, it's very liquid-like. I can syringe it right out of this syringe, and it will flow just like a liquid. But when I attach it to a circuit, I'll just add the liquid metal to the ends of this uh, light-emitting diode, a LED. When I take a battery 
and I hook it up, what you'll see is that that light will turn on. So now, with this liquid metal, thank you very much, with this liquid metal, we now have a material that's soft and fluid-like, but it can also conduct electricity. So what can we do with that? Why don't we see if we can make some really neat electronics? So what we can do is actually make an electronic circuit that self-heals, which means that you can cut it up into little pieces. And as you can see here, what we're doing is taking this circuit and we're punching holes in it, we're slicing it, we're removing entire sections, but it never stops conducting electricity. So this material can self-heal and it can conduct electricity, which is really unique and different from most electronics. So let's take the next step. What about using this in some kind of robot? So now we've made a robot, a soft robot that's soft, kind of like an octopus, and it can walk. But when you punch a hole in its leg, it can still walk. OK? So let's, let's do that again. We can punch a couple holes in this robot, and it actually never stops walking. So now we've created machines that you can punch holes in, and they'll continue to function. So if you thought anything that I talked about today was, was interesting or fascinating, I would certainly encourage you to think about taking your passion for science and math and applying it to engineering and maybe developing the next generation of materials. Thank you so much.